everyone, and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Michael Porgett. I am one of the retirement focused advisors for Caterpillar employees here at the Retirement Group. We welcome you today. I think you'll enjoy today's material. We at the Retirement Group work with a number of Fortune 500 companies like Caterpillar, helping their employees to achieve a successful, happy, and comfortable retirement. Uh, many of the resources that we have to offer include these on-demand webinars on all sorts of great subjects. Uh, you can always see our schedule on our website or our LinkedIn page. This is just one of the many resources that we have to offer. You can reach out and get your Caterpillar Retirement Guide. We also maintain a very comprehensive eBooks library filled with uh, subjects of all sorts. We also have a newsletter as well as a blog. And again, you can get this information off of our website or our LinkedIn page. <clears throat> and then finally, our retirement cash flow analysis. It's a comprehensive snapshot or roadmap, I like to say. It's a complimentary service that we'll offer uh, to anyone who is interested uh, to take a look at your current retirement situation and uh, basically let you know if you're on the right path. Uh, the sooner you get started in your retirement planning, the better off you're going to be, especially if uh, you unfortunately get tapped on the shoulder and the company has other plans for you. Finally, I want to mention that we at the Retirement Group, we're not affiliated with Caterpillar, nor are we affiliated with Hewitt. We're independent financial advisors and an independent financial advisory firm. We are here to help you, and we'd look forward to that opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and hand off the presentation to my partner, Patrick Ray. Patrick. Hey, thanks, Mike. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we appreciate your attention. We hope you find some value in spending some time with us this afternoon. And I'm going to talk today about a unique opportunity for you to get access to your qualified plan money and not be 59 and a half. And I know many of you may think that the only way for you to actually get access or get your hands on some of your retirement assets is to be beyond that age of 59 and a half. And while that's a general uh, perception, there are exception rules uh, that are available to you and to everyone who has the ability to get access to qualified plan money and not pay the 10% penalty, because that's the big kicker. And so we're going to talk about a number of things that are correlated to that. Uh, but as Mike had mentioned, we have um, a team of advisors across the country uh, here at the Retirement Group. We focus on a number of companies. Caterpillar is one of them to help people who are in positions similar to yours as an employee and get them to transition into a successful retirement. And one of the many tools that we use in an effort to do so is this webinar platform where we can talk about specific topics and certainly things that we get asked on a regular basis of how they work and why do you want to consider these kind of things? And that's what we're planning on talking a little bit about this afternoon. So uh, because we have a team of advisors and knowledgeable related to your Caterpillar plans and so forth, this might very well meet the criteria of people that you're looking for to gain a partnership with so that you can transition into a successful retirement. So we'll talk a little bit at the end about um, ways that you can engage with uh, the retirement group in an effort to get some of the services that we offer which had Mike, uh, Mike had mentioned are uh, complimentary in some cases. Uh, if you're not already following us on LinkedIn, please do so. Um, take a picture of this QR code that's on this screen, which gives you access to all the new material that we put out. Uh, I know many of you are mobile um, users in some way or shape or form with your phones or your iPads and your tablets and so forth. And so this is a great way to get updates on some of the stuff that we roll out on a very regular basis specific to your company. So I encourage you uh, to take advantage of that if you hadn't already done so. And specifically today, I'd mentioned we're going to cover some of the uh, accessibility rules, if you will, that uh, get you to avoid paying the 10% penalty to the IRS in case you need money uh, for whatever reason and you're not yet 59 and a half. Now, for those of you who are still working, uh, this may only be so relevant, right? And if the plan is for you to continue to work until past 59 and a half for whatever reason, then these exception rules are not necessary because you'll be in what they call a free rolling period, which occurs after 59 and a half, but before your 72, which is the new minimum distribution rules. And so today we're going to talk about the way you get around this penalty. And a couple of them are related to getting access to monies for medical expenses, um, health insurance related things. If you have some financial difficulties, 
Um, disability is a big one. Disability, if you're on disability as a Social Security uh, individual for Social Security disability, that's an automatic waiver for you, uh, for you to get access to your IRA monies without paying the penalty to the IRS. Um, if you have a beneficiary IRA, this of course also applies to you. So if you inherited some money from your folks uh, or family members uh, and you're required to take that portion out to run and cycle through the tax system, you are not required to pay that 10% penalty as well. Uh, but the two biggest ones that are, are that are gonna apply to the majority of people that we talk to and see on a regular basis is the 72T rule. This 72T is a code, it's an exception rule in the IRS uh, documents that allow you um, under these rules to get access to this money that you have in IRAs, but not yet be 59 and a half and not yet have to pay this 10% uh, penalty. And so I'm gonna cover a couple of those things today. Uh, but something that some of you may not know is if you have a, a child that's um, uh, planning to go to college and you're looking to use some of your retirement assets in an effort to pay uh, for that expense, if you have money in an IRA and you take a withdrawal and you make that check payable directly to the college institution of where that child is going to school, you will be able to avoid the 10% penalty. And the only thing you'll be responsible to pay is the income tax that's correlated to that disbursement. Uh, so that's something that some of you may not know. And it's certainly a useful tool for some of our folks who are looking to help supplement costs with their income flows in addition to you know bigger one-time expenses for tuition payments and room and board and that kind of thing. Um, if you're a first time home buyer, this is also an exception rule under the IRS code. So it gives you access to be able to uh, make a down payment and that kind of thing. Um, if you have never bought a home before. And then there's also some specific rules related to um, qualified reservist uh, distributions and new rules that are correlated to adoption and um, childbirth birth, uh, related things. Um, some of you may also have uh, what they call rule 415, which is an access of monies that you're able to save in your pension values and you're forced to take that money out on the year that you actually leave the payroll and 100% of those funds are taxable income. Um, we actually have a presentation that's correlated to this uh, accessibility rule and rule 415 that I encourage you to watch if you're a highly compensated individual or an executive uh, at Caterpillar because it would apply to you. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this specific to IRAs. So if you have IRA money, and this thing that I'm talking about related to something called 72T, it gives you access to get into those funds and help you supplement monies. And to give you an example of something that may be uh, of interest to you, if you're thinking about leaving Caterpillar and going to find a new job that may be less stressful, um, maybe something more correlated to what you actually want to do or enjoy doing, um, and you're not, not not yet technically ready to retire, but you still need to uh, create some income, that person may decide to leave Caterpillar and we can potentially utilize the ability to access penalty-free withdrawals from their IRAs to help supplement the income they're getting from their new job and meet their income needs while they're gaining and moving uh, forward in their new employment. And so what this allows you to do is to take what they call substantially equal payments. Uh, that's what the SEPP stands for. And you have to do this in one of two formats. Basically, you have to take the payments for at least five years or until you're 59 and a half, whichever of those two windows of time are longer. So example, someone's 57 years old, they start a 72T payment, perfectly fine, except for that person has to take those payments until they're 62. Whereas if you're 53 years old, for example, and you start a 72T payment, you're able to stop the 72T payments without any problems at 59 and a half because that window of time for that person is longer than five years. And so um, basically it relies on your tax rate as to what you're going to pay in income tax because you're still subject to pay income tax on those withdrawals, um, as you may well know. And uh, as long as those two windows of time are greater, you're free from paying the 10% penalty on these withdrawals. And so we have an example here to kind of walk through so you kind of have an idea on how this would apply. And so here it is, we have a 52 year old that has $800,000 roughly in pension and 401k and IRA assets, moves all the money to an IRA so that they have control of the funds and takes 72 T distributions over the next seven and a half years to effectively meet the guidelines that are uh, available to them under the IRS rules. So this is our example. So what this kind of looks like is this case study where on the left, what you have is the window of 72 T payments for that seven and a half year window of time. So this person is taking out 36,000 
$235 from their $800,000. And after the seven and a half years of withdrawals at a 5% interest rate compounded over that time window from a rate of return perspective, that value is about $925,716. So the subject of taxation due on the seven and a half years of payments withdrawn uh, on the 36,000 is roughly $88,775. And so if we do a projection, well, let's say 15 years out, that value in their IRA is roughly $1.073 million. Now, what's unique about this is the challenge of the interest rate environment where the interest rate environment affects a number of things in our society, um, some good, some bad. And in this case, the 72T payment is correlated to an interest rate called the federal midterm applicable rate. And so it's possible that $36,235, as an example, is not enough money for this person to get supplemental income from. And so the question then lies, what is the option for this person? And so to the right, what we're showing you is annual distributions that are not subject to 72T rules. So in fact, we're paying the 10% penalty on these amounts. And you might think to yourself, well, wait a minute, what we're talking about is ways to get around paying the 10% penalty. And that's absolutely true and correlated to this schedule on the left. However, it's possible that you need more money than this. And so what happens if you have to take, say, uh, the seven and a half years of substantially equal payments, but they need to be more than what the 72T calculation actually offers you? So to be clear, the 72T calculation is related to the 72T federal uh, middle, uh, middle play, uh, applicable rate, excuse me, um, and your life expectancy and the amount of money you have in your IRA. So those three things are what generates the amount of money that you can actually take out in this calculation. So if this person to the right in this particular example is required to take out more money and be subject to the 10% penalty, some of the questions might be, well, what does that mean after, you know, the window of time to get me to 59 and a half. And then maybe what we look at 10, 15 years out, right? So in this case, the value of the IRA is certainly less than the $925,716. A lot of that is attributable to taxes, as you can see, because on the right, we're paying not just federal income tax, but we're also paying the 10% penalty. So that totals about 114,000 and some change that we're paying to the IRS in taxes and penalties. But if you notice to the bottom to the comparison of how much is in your IRA after 15 years of these distributions, you might be surprised to see that it's only about a uh, less than a $50,000 difference. And so um, why is this important? Well, we're all about flexibility when it comes to trying to help somebody meet their retirement goals and investment objectives, okay? And so what we care about is when someone comes to the table and needs a solution to what we perceive as a potential issue, we want to make sure that we have a workaround with not just what's available to us, but if something is potentially not available to us and or might not be in your best interest, we want to look at all avenues. And in this case, on the surface, it might, see, it might seem to be odd to, to be uh, accepting to pay the 10% penalty to the IRS, when in fact, if we look out over a 15 year window of time, it doesn't mean a great deal of money and difference between the values in your IRA. So certainly this is just something to think about, but this unique this rule is unique to examples. And so what we wanna do is take a look at some of the things that might um, affect you and or you run into if you decide to consider taking a 72T, uh, T payment. So for example, taking and starting a 72T payment but stopping those payments before the five year or 59 and a half window of time is over. So we wanna look at what happens if that occurs. Number two, supplementing an initial 72T payment and then finding out that six months or 12 months later, you wanna buy a car and you need to schedule some additional income. So we're gonna talk about that as another example or scenario that you might run into. Number three is taking in an early IRA withdrawal with penalties to provide for the potential emergency scenario. So instead of generating an additional 72T payment to, uh, to make monthly payments on a new car that you buy, you may just decide to pay cash for the car. But either way, you're required to get additional money out. And so we'll talk about those scenarios. And lastly, what it means to take a 72T distribution and supplement that what they call with a post-55 separation distribution. 
which is the ability for you to get access to your 401k money after you leave the payroll, assuming you still leave your 401k with Caterpillar and be able to take withdrawals, but not be subject to that 10% penalty uh, that the IRS has because you're not 59 and a half. So scenario number one, what happens if we start a payment and then stop it before that schedule is over? Okay, so here's what happens. We have the $800,000 uh, total value of an IRA that we talked about. And you'll notice that we split these up into two pools, okay? Pool number one has $500,000 in it. And this is where we generate the 72T withdrawal. And in this case was $23,000. And then we have another IRA that you're not taking withdrawals from that has $300,000 in it in this example. And so, of course, as I mentioned, when you take withdrawals from the 72T schedule, you're required to pay income tax on the funds. But what happens if you pick up another position or another job, or you get hired back at Caterpillar as an example, because I know sometimes that happens, um, and you don't need the money. The question is, if you haven't already uh, fulfilled your requirement of that five years or 59 and a half, and whichever of those two windows of time are longer, what happens? That's the question. And so, well, if you stop the payments, then the penalty is retro to every dollar you have removed. So, the purpose of setting up this 72T schedule is to avoid the penalty. That's basically the number one priority here, okay? But if you stop the schedule before the schedule has been satisfied, you're going to be responsible to pay the penalty of that 10% that you set up to try to avoid on the entire value of monies you removed. So in this case, this person took two years of payments at $23,000 each, which is $46,000. That means that that penalty will be $4,600 for this person if they end up doing this exact thing, which is to start a schedule and then stop it before the schedule was satisfied, okay? Now, scenario number two is supplementing your first 72T payment with an additional 72T payment. And again, you might ask yourself, well, why on earth would that happen? Well, because we set up the first schedule at the $500,000 IRA level, which produced the $23,000 a year in payments. But in six months or 12 months from there, you needed to buy a car. You wanted additional income because your spouse ended up stopped uh, and no, is no longer working. So in this case, we set up a, an additional 72T PIM. And so you can see, again, we separated this $300,000 secondary IRA into two additional IRAs, one of which we started a different stream of 72T payments. And so to be clear, there is no requirement on how many of these things you can or cannot have going at the same time. So in other words, you can have 15 72T payments set up if you wanted and or needed to do so. The catch is that each one of the payment structures are responsible to satisfy their own requirements. So remember, it's five years or 59 and a half, whichever of those two windows of time are longer. So if you start this one and then six months later, start another uh, payment series, this new payment series is going to have a new five-year or 59 and a half schedule. So you will have two completely different schedules going on at the very same time. But of course, again, we're doing this to try to avoid the 72T um, penalty that, refer that, you're, that you're basically getting around. So in other words, you're trying to save the extra 10% that would go to the IRS by setting the scenario up like this. Now, what happens if we set up a 72T payment in our third scenario, and then we need access to a one-time withdrawal for a trip that you want to take to Europe, or uh, a cash payment that you want to make on a car, or to give money to a kid that's getting married, uh, or something like this? Well, what you can do is you can not interrupt the additional payment set uh, setup that we've got to structure the $23,000 that's avoiding the 10% penalty and use the emergency IRA to take a one-time withdrawal. And in this exercise or this example, we've got it uh, uh, taking a, being removed at $10,000. You'll be subject to pay the 10% penalty on the $10,000 one-time withdrawal, which is $1,000, and that's it. And so it doesn't interrupt your um, IRA schedule and the 72T schedule that we set up, but in fact, still gives you access to one-time withdrawals during that window without being subject to interrupt these payments and then having a penalty that's retro to every dollar that you've removed. Now, the last scenario is pretty unique, and this is something that we probably use the most, which is a combination of working their IRAs to generate income from uh, that pool of capital, 
uh, to avoid the 10% penalty. And in addition, supplementing those monies with withdrawals from what they call post-55 separation payments or post-55 distributions. Now, that post-55 separation distribution schedule only applies if you are 55 or older in the year you leave the payroll or Caterpillar, okay? So if you're 53, this is not gonna work. Now we can still set up an original 72T schedule for you, except you won't be able to use the post-55 separation payments, okay? However, if you're 55 or 56 or 57 and you leave the payroll, then we can potentially use both. And so you've got two different pools of uh, funds being available to you and certainly giving you access to monies. So in this case, we've got $600,000 in the IRA and we split these up to give you one 72T schedule, have another that's set up for the emergency monies. And then you'll see in this case, $200,000 in the company 401k. And what's really unique about the post-55 separation schedule that is not unique to the 72T schedule is, you'll notice these numbers are different. So in year one from the 401k, they took out 21,000. The second year, they took out 17,000. And then the third year, they took out 23,000. Except in the 72T schedule, they're the same payments every single year because we can't interrupt those. Those are fixed structures based on the 72T uh, federal middle, midterm applicable rate, your life expectancy, and the value of that IRA, which in this case is $200,000. But the post-55 payments have a unique ability for you to um, change the amount of money from year to year on what you take out which is great because your financial situation may change during that window of time. And so it gives you some more flexibility added to your overall financial plan that your 72T payment just simply does not. Now, the catch to all of this is the planning aspect of it, as I just referenced. And so we know that the majority of people that we see spend more time planning for a two-week vacation than they do their own retirement plans. And frankly, there's no reason for that. There's no excuse for that because firms like ours do this type of planning and help you with stress testing your overall plans. And we do it on a complimentary basis. It's a way for us to interact with you and see if it's a good fit between us and what you're looking to gain from a partnership and someone in our shoes and um, being able to do so to meet your overall goals and objectives. And so because this is a service that we offer uh, for free, and we use it as a way to get an introduction to you, uh, we know that even if there's not a way for us to do business together, that you'll potentially talk favorably about us to other uh, Caterpillar co-workers, even though there wasn't a good fit for us to work together if we went through this exercise. So we have no qualms or problems at all in doing this. And so um, for those of you who uh, are looking for either an additional opinion or a second opinion, uh, to give you an understanding of some of the things you may want to consider in asking when you go through this process is, do this, does this firm or does this team understand your benefits at Caterpillar and how your pension works and how the healthcare benefits work and how the different things and tools are available to you to be able to plan for a successful retirement? That might be a priority for some of you. Uh, clearly, you want to know what the compensation level is. Uh, obviously, you want to know what it is that you're paying for and in turn, most importantly, what you're getting uh, as the, the compensation that you're giving to that, uh, that you know, investment firm or those uh, financial advisors. And so that's clearly important. Uh, do they have a team? You don't want to work with someone who is an end-all be-all and has to be required to not only have communications with you, but make the investments and do all the homework and research where we have a team of people at the retirement group uh, in an effort to help us with. Uh, and maybe to circle back on what I just mentioned, which is your expectations. I don't know if I could pinpoint anything more important than for you to think through what it is that you expect so that you can have this uh, partnership and, and this experience that's consistent with what's important to you. How often do you want to be communicated with? What are your expected levels of return for the risk that you're willing to assume? How often do you expect uh, trades and different things happening in your account? Uh, to go on? You know, are there uh, things that you can do on a website, calculators, et cetera, and those kind of things? And then, of course, in the end, uh, do they offer a cash flow analysis? And then I mentioned on a number of occasions, this is something we do on a complimentary basis. So we encourage you uh, to take advantage of that. So if you're interested in reaching out to us with either specific questions or concerns about your circumstance, you can do that in a couple of ways. A, you can email us at info at theretirementgroup.com. Okay. You can also take a picture of the QR code to the left, and that will get you access to a calendar where you can schedule a 15-minute call with one of our uh, Caterpillar-focused advisors to 
get your questions answered or to talk specific with, uh, specifically with you in relation to what we can do to help you. And uh, lastly, of course, that's the QR code on the right that I mentioned at the beginning that gives you access to our LinkedIn page where uh, you can follow us on LinkedIn to get access and updates on all the stuff that's going on at Caterpillar that we roll out on a regular basis. You can also call us at 800-900-5867. That's our number where you can reach out and touch base with us personally as well. So what I'm going to do is, uh, with that, give it back to Mike with uh, some closing remarks and to make sure that uh, we can address any questions that might have came up during the webinar today. So, Mike? Patrick, thank you. And yes, we do have a couple of good questions, so let's get started. The okay. first one, what is the most common 72T scenario Caterpillar employees take? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, to be clear, there's only one 72T situation. And the way it works is it's based off of three things. It's very cut and dry. It's the federal midterm applicable rate, the value of whatever you have in your IRA, and your life expectancy. So those three things tell us what the IRS will allow you to take out on a 72T schedule. Now, if you're asking us what we see on a regular basis to deal with specifically our Caterpillar folks, many of these people who start 72T payments use the fourth scenario that I went through, which is to supplement their 72T because typically it's not enough income to, um, to live off of and to meet their financial goals. And they supplement that with that post-55 separation payment or distribution option that we talked about that comes specifically from your 401k. So the good news is, you can potentially use both as long as you're over the age of 55 when you leave Caterpillar as an employee. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Patrick. Um, our next question, if I have not contributed to an IRA while at Caterpillar and want to now, can I do catch-ups for previous years? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple of questions related to that specific question. So if you're referring to the money outside the plan, where you're talking specifically about an IRA or a Roth IRA, many of our folks at Caterpillar we see um, cannot contribute to a Roth IRA because they make too much money. So that's a that that's a a different issue, right, by by itself. But you have up till April 15th of the previous uh, or the, uh, this current year, for example, to fund the previous years. Uh, IRAs, right? So we're past that uh, time period for uh, the tax year of 2021 or 2022 at this point, but you can still make 2022's contribution. It just can't be a catch up. But something you can do is you can earmark money to go into your 401k and include catch up provisions there where you can put in as much as you can afford it, uh, to put in up to the IRS limits, which is close to $27,000 at this point if you're over the age of 50. So it can be done. Uh, of course, um, for this person, I would also encourage them to watch our um, uh, value-based video where we talk about the, um, the tax-efficient retirement stuff, which includes how to contribute and how to make Roth contributions or how to make non-deductible IRA contributions and convert them to a Roth IRA. Uh, very useful strategy for you to get some money in a tax-free environment for sure going forward. So hopefully that answered the question. Thank you. And uh, one final question. If I use your service, am I required to use Charles Schwab or Fidelity? Question mark. Can I use another money management firm? So this is a good question. And this is probably one of the things you want to put on the list of questions to ask, you know, advisors or whoever it is that you're interviewing to look for a partnership. In our case at the retirement group, we use Charles Schwab as a custodian. So if you're gonna do business with us, in most cases, you're gonna end up parking money at Charles Schwab. But what's unique about the relationship that we have with Charles Schwab is within the framework of your Charles Schwab account, we can hire multiple money managers on different levels to address specific things that are needed for the management of your actual retirement assets. And so um, we can help on many fronts to get that done but Charles Schwab is the answer for us. And so if you choose us as a team member, and this is also an exercise that you wanna go through uh, maybe sooner rather than later to try to get a gauge for who it is that you do wanna work with when you're, if you're looking for a partner uh, in retirement for sure, which is to uh, interact with not just us, but how the interactions go with Charles Schwab 
so you have a better handle on how that works. Patrick, thank you. And again, we both want to thank you for joining us today. We hope this was helpful. Uh, just a couple of things. Again, you can reach out to our office at 1-800-900-5867 or send us an email at info at the Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Take care, everyone. Stay safe.